Welcome to First United Lutheran Church. This is the message from Sunday. It's our prayer that this message touches your heart and helps to guide you in your life. Let's listen. Memorial Day weekend. What does that mean to you when we talk about Memorial Day? We have Veterans Day and we have Memorial Day. How do they differ from each other? Well, for Veterans Day, we remember all veterans. And on Memorial Day, we specifically remember those men and women who have given their lives in order to protect the freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States of America. They've made the supreme sacrifice. It reminds me of one pastor who is out in a rural area, and you know a lot of rural churches have cemeteries on the ground. And this young man was not in school on that day, so he was with his father that Monday. And they were at the church, and he saw the little flags out on the graves, and he says, Dad, he says, what are those flags, and what do they signify? He said, well, son, those are uh, for uh, people who died in the service. And he says, which one, Dad, morning or evening? (laughs) Well, they can get pretty dull sometimes, but I don't know of any of them that's killed anybody at this point. (laughs) But Memorial Day means different things to different people. For some, it means the beginning of summer vacation. For some, it's a time to cook hamburgers or steaks out on the grill. And by the way, if you ever want a steak, I highly recommend Chuck's. He's a good griller. I got invited over there last year. It wasn't Memorial Day, but it was still a good steak. Well, some people, uh, it signifies, you know, the opening of the pool. Still a little cool for that here, but in some places uh, where we're from down in the south. Boating, beach trips, barbecues, pool openings, four-day weekends. I'm not saying any of these things are bad. In fact, they're all well and good if kept in their proper perspective. But Memorial Day has a much deeper meaning. It's a time, again, that we set aside every year to remember those brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in giving their lives for our country. We have these things designed to help us remember. We have memorials. Some people give memorials to the church so that their relatives who have passed on and gone on to be with the Lord will not be forgotten. Because we are by nature forgetful people. I know I am forgetful. I've become more forgetful as I've gotten older, and they tell me part of that's a byproduct of having heart surgery, that that makes you a little bit on the forgetful side. But uh, one of the most extreme examples of forgetfulness is a guy I heard of named John. He had a really terrible memory. And he met his friend Bill one day and he said, Hey Bill, he said, you know how terrible my memory has always been? He said, yeah. He says, well I want to tell you, I went to this memory seminar and I don't forget anything anymore. He says, my memory is 100% better. And he said, you know, I'm getting a little older myself. I'm getting a little forgetful. I wouldn't mind going to a seminar like that. What's the name of it? He said, uh, uh, uh. Bill, what's the name of that flower with a long stem on it and some thorns and a bloom? He says, Rose, you mean? Yeah, that's it. Rose, what was the name of that seminar we went to? (laughs) I'm not that bad. At least not yet, thankfully. (laughs) Sometimes our memory fails us. We tie a string around our finger to help us remember certain things. Put sticky notes around on our desks. I know I do that as a friendly reminder to myself. And of course, calendars are printed to help us remember. Christmas is marked, even though we know it's December 25th. It's marked on the calendar so we don't forget. And of course, will any of the retailers allow us to forget Christmas. I seriously doubt it. But uh, we remember Easter, all of our other holidays. We're a forgetful people. 
And not only do we forget names, but we forget where we put our wallet. They say that everybody who wears glasses needs three pairs. One for indoors, one for outside, and another one that you can keep stashed somewhere when you forget where you put the other two and you need to see where you can find them. You know, that's another thing. Now, there are special days and times in the Bible designed to help us remember. And I want you to see that having Memorial Day and memorials in general, that is a scriptural concept. We can take that right from the pages of God's Word, and there are three memorials I want to share with you right from the Word of God today. But before I do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings of this day. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in our sight. O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Uh, Father, teach us to repent of our sins and to believe on Jesus as our Savior always. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The first of these memorials that I would like to call to your attention from the Word of God, and there are others, Uh, every time we see a rainbow, we remember the covenant that God made with Noah, but those are the smaller ones. The most important one in the Old Testament that we find is the Passover. And we read about that in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. That's just for the sake of reference. I'm not going to take the time to read all of that. I'll just more or less kind of paraphrase the story for you. You may remember, and I hope you do, because God wants us to remember the Passover, because Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. The Israelites were in Egyptian bondage, and God sent Moses to be their deliverer. And yet Pharaoh hardened his heart so that he would not let God's people go. And God sent plague after plague after plague until the final plague came upon Egypt. And that is the death of the firstborn. God decreed that the firstborn of every family in Egypt would die that night. It was to be a terrible punishment, terrible judgment, uh, heaped out on Egypt because of Pharaoh's stubbornness and hard-heartedness. Well, the Israelites were commanded to take a lamb, a spotless lamb without any blemish, which represented the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, John 1.29, who is to be without sin and a perfect sacrifice on our behalf. They were to take that lamb and kill that lamb and sprinkle the blood over the doorposts and to do so with a hyssop, to wipe the blood up there so that when the death angel came through the land of Egypt, he would pass over those households and the firstborn in those households would not die. The Israelites would be safe from that judgment that God was pouring out on the nation of Egypt. And on that particular day, God set up a memorial. He says, I want you to remember all of this. I want you to remember the haste with which you left. I want you to eat unleavened bread because you don't have time to let the bread rise. That's going to remind you of the great haste in which you left Egypt. I want you to eat bitter herbs, which will remind you of the bitterness of your bondage. Today, we remember the bitterness of our sin and how God delivered us from that bondage to sin through Jesus Christ. And they were to go ahead and partake of roasted eggs and other things that are specified and to eat of that lamb And to do so, remembering when God parted the sea and brought them safely across the 40 years in the wilderness, the manna, all that they had gone through in order to get to the promised land. They were to remember that on an annual basis. And so we remember Jesus Christ who set up the Lord's Supper in the midst of the Passover meal And we remember how that He is our Passover who was sacrificed for us. The next memorial that we want to look at from the pages of God's Word so that we can see that this is indeed a scriptural concept to have Memorial Day is the day of worship. 
God said in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8, Remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Keep it separate. Now today as Christians, often we forget that we do not worship on the Sabbath day as did the Israelites. The Sabbath was on Saturday. Our Seventh-day Adventist friends, they are correct in that regard. And if I had a better memory, I wouldn't have to use notes that would fall on the floor in the middle of my sermon. (laughs) Uh, However, when we talk about these memorials and we remember the day of worship, the principle of remembering the Sabbath does carry over to the Lord's Day. It's not that we have to worship on the Lord's Day. It's that we get to. We have a privilege of worshiping on the Lord's Day. It's not by duty or obligation. It's out of joy and thanksgiving and praise to the God who has given us so much in giving His only Son for us. And of course in Acts 20 and verse 7, the Bible says that the disciples came together on the first day of the week. That's the Christian day of worship because Jesus rose on what day? The first day of the week, which is Sunday. Now we have one day a year where we commemorate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. I figure we kind of as humans invented Easter on the Christian calendar so we can excuse ourselves the other 51 days of the year from actually going and celebrating the resurrection in worship. In actuality, God has decreed that every Sunday is Easter Sunday because every Sunday is what John referred to in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 as the Lord's Day. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And just as Israelites were commanded to remember every Sabbath day, we should remember every Lord's Day. Now, God did not have to say, remember every Sabbath, because every week had a Sabbath. God does not have to say, remember every Lord's Day, because every week has a first day. And yet, how often we forget. We need to tie a string around our fingers so that we remember the day where we come to remember our Savior which is the first day of the week in the Lord's Day. It all started in the very beginning, this concept of a day of worship, when God created the heavens and the earth. In six days, He worked. And then He rested. Why? Was He tired? No, it just meant that He ceased from His creative work. And technically... As far as God is concerned, since a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day, God is still in His Sabbath because He has rested from His creative work and because of the fall, He began the work of redemption. And He's still in that Sabbath from creation. And He's still going about the work of redemption. He is the architect of our salvation. Jesus Christ is our Redeemer. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. And through the work of the Trinity, we're brought back into a relationship with God, and God will one day resume His creative work when He creates for us the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, and the new earth. Until then, we remember and cease from our labors. Now, is it a sin necessarily to work on Sunday? No, it isn't. We're not under the Sabbath. We find that Jesus fulfilled the Sabbath. Jesus Christ is our Sabbath. We rest in His work for us at the cross. But we still have a designated day of worship. And the principle of neglecting the Sabbath or breaking the Sabbath is there when we neglect word and sacrament. When we just selfishly go on about our own business on the Lord's Day, and neglect to come together to worship. Now, I realize I'm preaching to our most dedicated people in worship today. 
And the ones who really need to hear this are probably at the lake, <laughs> as cold as it is today. So you're to be commended for being here and remembering the Lord's Day on the first day of the week. God bless you for remembering. And then, of course, we want to remember another memorial. Jesus said, this do in remembrance of me. We remember Jesus in the Lord's Supper. Some of our churches have the Lord's Supper weekly. Some of our churches have it monthly. Some have it bi-weekly. Some have it only on special occasions. I've never understood that one. They say, well, you know, if we have the Lord's Supper every week, it will lose its importance. It will lose its spiritual significance. We don't say that about the offering. <laughs> oh, we're afraid the offering will just become a routine. No, we don't do that. But we do that with the Lord's Supper. We're afraid it will just become a routine. <laughs> Paul said, I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that on the same night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup after they had dined. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, All of you drink from it. From it. For this cup is the New Testament or New Covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes again. We remember three things when we come together at the Lord's table. We remember the cross. We look back at the cross and Jesus shed blood for us. We not only remember it, we receive it. With and under the bread and the wine, we receive the literal body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It still is bread and wine, but it is also the body and blood of our Lord. How do I know that? Because the Bible says so. And that's enough for me. And also, we remember our present unity. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16, he said, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one loaf, or that one bread. When we come together, we all partake of unleavened bread together, representing the sinless body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we receive His body and His blood in the sacrament, in a literal sense, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we do that remembering Jesus' promise that He will come again. We look forward to the coming of the Lord. We look to our unity. And by the way, the Corinthians had forgotten about their unity. They didn't have any unity. There's a difference between union and unity. We're called First United Lutheran. It's my prayer that we will be united. But you know, you can take two cats, tie their tails together, and throw them over a clothesline. When they come together, you'll have union, but no unity. A lot of churches are like that. Lots of union, lots of activities, lots of coming together, but no unity. What's our unity based on? It's based on Christ. We are one bread, one body, one family with one Father. We have the same Father. We confess the same creed. We have the same guide. The Lutheran confessions, as they properly interpret the Word of God, I hold to what the Missouri Synod calls a quia subscription. I know you know what that is. That is, I believe... Not that the Lutheran confessions are necessarily inspired, because they're not, but I believe they are a correct interpretation of the Word of God, and I will continue to believe that until somebody proves it otherwise. And if they do, then I would no longer be a Lutheran. Because the Word of God, sola scriptura, scripture alone, 
as our final authority. But we remember the sacrificial death of our Lord. We remember our unity. And by the way, the Word of God never says we are to create unity. It says we are to preserve unity. God has given us everything we need to be unified in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, we preserve that unity. Unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. How do we do that? Love and forgive one another. That's how we do that. We always have to learn to do that, don't we? Can't say we love somebody if we refuse to forgive them. And so we remember the Lord forgiving us. And so we are able to forgive one another and preserve that unity that is represented in the Lord's Supper. And we remember that unity. We remember the promise of our Lord to come back for us and take us home. We have to remember Memorial Day weekend, our brave men and women who gave their lives for us. We need to remember on Veterans Day, our brave veterans who have served so bravely. And there are many in this congregation. Doug, bless his heart, served in the same place at the same time that my father did. He may have actually seen my father at one point or actually met up with him and, hey, you meet so many over there of those brave servicemen over in the South Pacific. If you did meet him, Doug, you probably wouldn't remember because you've met so many. But I remember my father and his service. I remember men like Doug. And I remember Vietnam veterans who gave their lives. And I remember the sacrifice so many made and losing their limbs in Iraq and Afghanistan due to roadside bombs and the like. And I think ultimately about our Savior who made the ultimate sacrifice for us and how they have followed His example. They died to purchase our political freedoms. Jesus died for our spiritual freedom. So every memorial should point us ultimately to Him. You think about that. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message from First United Lutheran Church.